website and membership. Uh, the reason we're stepping forward today is because there is a, a research project that I want us to be able to discuss a little bit more in detail and then open it up for you to have your questions answered, hopefully, about this research project, but also for any of those of you who may be interested in participating um, is why this has been called here today. Before I go on any further, allow me to just simply turn this over to Phil to introduce more properly yourself. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you very much for coming. It's and um, thank you, Daniel, for giving me this opportunity. It's really nice to be able to talk to people, um, especially given the way that it's been last over the last couple of years. Uh, I started my research project just before COVID hit and it sort of um, it moved it in a slightly different direction, which has actually turned out, I think, to be really good. Um, now, I don't want to speak for too long because I, I really want it to be a discussion, um, but obviously I need to introduce the research. So I will just tell you what the research is focusing on and how I'm planning to do it and why I think it's important. So um, the research is focusing on people's experiences of developing their mediumship skills and abilities. So um, a lot of research has already focused on, say, uh, proving that mediumship um, is real, in inverted commas, people can um, communicate with uh, spirits of deceased individuals and produce accurate information. But um, the other side of, of the coin is people's, um, the, the process of the communication experience. And not a lot is known about that. Um, especially not a lot is known about um, how people develop these skills. Some people obviously um, are able to communicate with the spirits of deceased individuals um, sort of uh, naturally without having to do anything in the way of development, but even they may uh, want to develop ways of managing their communication or um, in sort of uh, develop ways of interpreting the information they're getting and also managing um, the communication with um, the, the client, the person who is asking them for information. And I know that the spiritualist churches and the SNEI run development uh, circles, open circles for attunement, um, learning to attune to the spirit world, and then more uh, specific development circles for taking it a step further. And I'm really interested in the beginning part of that, where people are learning um, about how it feels to attune to the spirit world, how, for instance, to recognize, say, spirit guides or helpers, um, how to tell, I attended a, a course at the Arthur Finley College about how to tell the difference between psychic information and information coming from the spirit world. And of course, one of the questions a lot of people ask is, um, how do I tell it's not my imagination? Uh, these are, are things that um, to, uh, say a lay audience or to um, scientific establishment are really not known about and the information we have is based say on autobiographies people like Doris Stokes who've written about their experiences but these are sort of a few individuals um, who've become very well known so they don't necessarily represent uh, everybody's experiences and they are very much from um, a position, it, usually the development process is quite a long way in the past for them. So I really would like to be able to talk to people um, per, partly about how they came to, to, to think about developing mediumship skills, what it was that led them to this point, and then to talk to them during the initial stages of the process and just to ask them about how they're finding it, how they're feeling, uh, what sort of experiences they've had. Um, so the, 
this leads on to the, the how, if you like. It's in two sta stages. The first stage is a survey, and I've put the survey out. It's open to anybody at any stage of mediumship development. Um, and it asks about people's uh, beliefs about their prior experiences, their reactions to them, um, and why they th thought about taking the step of mediumship development. So that's the survey. Um, and then the next stage is interviews, where I'll be, I'm hoping to interview a smaller number of people. Uh, I'd love to interview lots of people, but there isn't the time because I would like to interview each person three times over the course of eight to 10 months um, as a way of uh, just being able to discuss their experiences close to the time at which they're having them. Um, I do want to emphasize that at this point, there is no, uh, no thought of any testing of any mediumship skills, and there isn't any expectation that people will necessarily develop them over this period of time. I have, I, Daniel knows, and some people here may know, I have been attending an SNUI uh, attunement group um, for over a year now, just to get, I just wanted to get some background knowledge and experience for myself um, so that I could understand the language people were using and had an idea of the activities. It's been a really interesting experience, so much so that when I was supposed to stop after six months, I said, can I carry on? Um, but it's also shown me that people's experiences are very varied and their, um, their paths in a way. So people may not experience a lot of change for quite a long time. That doesn't matter. What matters to me is how they feel about the process. So it would be asking people, you know, sort of um, what their, their inner changes, whether they have any changes in beliefs, whether they um, feel differently about their mediumship process or their journey as they go through it. Um, so it's not really about uh, measuring or assessing anybody's skills at any point. It is really just wanting to know how people find the, the process. Now I can stop there or I can have a do a, a quick uh, explanation of why I think it is important. Um, Daniel, what would you rather? Uh, you are obviously you have developed your psychism because I was going to come to you next and ask um, why for you this has become an important uh, topic to research a bit more. So you're welcome to ex express that a bit more. Okay, I'll, I'll try and be very brief because once I get started, you know, it, it sort of <laughs> takes over a bit. Um, I think, as I've said, we don't know much about this process, but you might ask, well, you know, why do we need to? Obviously, the people who are going through it don't need to. I'm talking more from a psychology, a parapsychology, a, a science perspective. And you probably all know that the Western scientific view of these things is that they're just not possible. You know, life after death is not possible. Uh, so communication with um, deceased individuals is not possible. Um, knowing things or being able to see things at a distance or um, having premonitions about the future, not possible. So it doesn't happen. And that actually runs counter to a lot of people's experiences. One of the things that uh, surveys have shown is that although these experiences may be described as anomalous in that they're not necessarily very common um, in, in sort of population terms, it is actually the case that most people have had one or two of these strange experiences themselves. So we're talking about a lot of people and a lot of experiences, the science just says, no, you can't, you know, not possible, so it's not happening. Um, which is one of the reasons that parapsychology has developed to take this on in a scientific research oriented way and say, how can we prove this? Um, and they've taken uh, in 
they've gone into the lab, they've tried to find ways of testing, and ways of testing that have to stand up to scientific scrutiny. They have to ensure that there can be no cheating, that they're not, um, not just cheating, but the statistics are all right. So from a scientific point of view, there is a lot of research, at least from my point of view, it looks like a lot of research, but um, parapsychology is, is actually quite a small area. But there is research and it is having positive results. But one of the ways in which scientists step back from that and say, well, OK, maybe, but um, you can't explain how it works. So, you know, really, we don't have to pay any attention to it. Um, and it, so there are one of the important things about this is that if we look at the process and especially people who um, maybe started out not being you know, sort of naturally um, uh, having sort of fully fledged communication abilities and going through a development process, we may find out things that are important for how this works. Uh, I've been introduced um, through the, the group to the concepts of energy and intention, the importance of intention, the importance of your thoughts, these sorts of things that could point the way to future research, which might help us to understand what is going on, uh, which from a scientific point, you know, from your point of view, you may not need to know that from a scientific point of view, I think it would help. And one way in which it might help in a very concrete way is that uh, our sort of medical um, and psychological mental health professional uh, professionals, they're trained in this point of view that these things are impossible. And so uh, counselors and, and therapists are taught that these things um, should be denied or avoided, set to one side. If people talk about them, they are either deluded or mistaken. And possibly these can be, um, you know, sort of people reporting paranormal or anomalous experiences. They can sound very similar to symptoms of genuine mental illness. And for a trained counsellor, it's very difficult to tell the difference. And so they don't feel in, um, they don't feel they have the competence to deal with these things. Um, and it means that people who have paranormal experiences, who maybe um, have some communications from um, deceased individuals or who maybe have premonitions and find them disturbing, don't understand them, don't really know what's going on, it's difficult for them to find suitable help. Um, you know, the, the mainstream scientific uh, route may not actually help them, but they may not feel comfortable about rocking up at a, a spiritualist church, even if they know about them. So it's um, an understanding of the processes and the experiences involved uh, could possibly um, really help with this. It could feed into ways of helping people differentiate between what is, you know, people who, who need genuinely help with, with mental illness and people who actually um, are having much more spiritual experience that is valid in its own right. Right, so that is my, hopefully, the summary of why I think it's valuable. You may have your own ideas and I would love to hear about them. I can talk a little bit more about the concrete um, way it, it works, you know, the, the actual survey, also things about data storage and privacy uh, uh, at some point. But sure. Daniel, back to you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you, Phil. Uh, I think you've made some very valid points. And, you know, I'm, I'm quite invested in this because my personal story, I won't go deep into it, uh, but my personal story uh, started off with uh, ending up in facilities because of my phenomenon I was experiencing wasn't accepted. Um, and actually it was considered uh, quite alarming for the age that I was. Um, so this is why I have a personal investment in honoring the work that you are doing because you are creating quite 
the opening, the doorway, if you will, to a whole new level of understanding of those of us who develop through our own faculties. And I very much appreciate your, your commitment level. You've gone to uh, the Arthur Finley College. You've uh, enrolled yourself into a development circle. Um, I can tell your passion, uh, where it's focused and where it comes from. So this is why I, I definitely have a, a grown uh, a lot of respect for you and the work that you're doing. And for all of us, this is a vital, I feel, my opinion, a vital opportunity for us to participate in something for those of us that may qualify for this uh, study itself to really change the way that a lot of development or mediumship or mediums, if you will, whatever range we call ourselves are seen. As you know, Phil, the, the process of change and development is quite important when we look at the factors of how something becomes something else and how it would change. Because to simply state mediumship can happen, according to science, it can happen. It has validity to an extent. But if we go in on a dip, deeper level, as you are, to the process of change and what's occurring, we start picking up on the traits and the characteristics that become commonalities. And we're able to start to quantify what this can look like, what this can be. And as you said, the ability then to take this study, this project, and start to hopefully incorporate it into trainings, workshops, um, simply informatives, what this can do. This is a very vital, strong step in a very, I believe, a very progressive uh, path. And I believe that you are definitely pioneering something here. And um, appreciate that very much. So if you are open to it, uh, we can see if there are questions from uh, the audience. And, uh, and then we can touch on the parts that are related to the actual survey. Just to clarify this uh, it is, sorry, not the survey, the project. This is a research project that um, Phil is conducting. There are the two parts, the survey, which anyone can fill out. And we can include an email to uh, all the, um, the link to the survey. Uh, and also um, the other part is the interviews that would be conducted over time. And again, because of the commitment level, Phil cannot take on 20 or more uh, participants as that, as lovely as it may be, is gonna require a lot of commitment level, but we shall see how this turns out. Um, am I expressing that and clarifying that um, correctly, Phil? Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, so are you okay with some questions before we move along? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Any questions and actually any comments uh, from anyone, if you could just simply raise your mechanical hand here, your virtual hand, because we are spotlighted. I cannot see all of you. Uh, if you can please do so, I will come to you and unmute you so that you may ask uh, any questions you may have. Yes, let's see, quite, oh, quite a few, how lovely. All right, uh, June, will you step in please? Good evening both. What excludes us? from participating? Okay, um, the, sur the survey is open to everybody, so nobody is excluded from that. Um, the survey includes at the end a question which says, would you be prepared to take part in the interview stage? Um, and I have a, a sort of, um, I've set up a, a system which, looks at people's answers to the survey. And um, for me, it's quite important that people are quite close to the beginning of the process. Mm. So somebody who fills in the survey and says that they're already teaching other people mediumship skills would probably not be suitable because they'd be too far away from their own development process. Is, does that answer your question? Sorry, I can't see you anymore. Oh, that's... sorry, I put my oh, hands down. Yeah. Um, yes, it does answer my question, and probably I would be excluded. Uh, that's a, I hate saying, you know, I, I, I hate this process because I wouldn't want to exclude anybody, but um, I do have a, a limited time. I think that's, that's the problem, but I would be, it, it might be useful actually to consider maybe 
if people express an interest in research, we could maybe keep, Daniel could keep their details and there will be other projects. My supervisor at Northampton, Chris Rowe, works with people at the Arthur Finby College. His mediumship research is ongoing. So, um, well, we have met. Ah, right. Yes. Um, um, there will probably be people who've met him. We can definitely uh, keep you along, June. Don't run away from me. Stay close. Thank you. Uh, that's a great question. Thank you for starting this off. Um, we have here uh, Ricky, please step in. Yes, thank you. Um, it's really exciting. Um, where are you? I have lost you, Phil. Oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sorry uh, for my ignorance, I might have missed, uh, but what are you affiliated with? Is it the paranormal psychology? Um, hi, Ricky, that's a good question. Um, in terms of university, I'm affiliated with the University of Northampton. I'm a PhD student there, and my supervisors are Professor Chris Rowe, who works with uh, the Arthur Finley College and uh, has done research with other mediums and um, Glenn Hitchman, Dr. Glenn Hitchman. Um, and the discipline is parapsychology, which para just means alongside, and that's the name they use at the moment, but it focuses on um, experiences, psychological investigation of experiences that are unexplained by normal scientific processes. Does that, does that answer your question? Yes. So if, if I understand correctly, not that it makes any difference, so that will be part of your PhD work? Yes. I see. Yes. I see. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to make a note, um, and I don't know why I want to say that, but within uh, the mediumistic unfoldment, there is always part of beginning. Yeah because it's unfoldment. And yeah. because if it's unfoldment, there is always new things that the medium uh, is working with understanding. So I don't know why I wanna say that, I just to invite to stay open to a new unfoldment within the developed medium, because it's always a continuum. Yes, yeah, so definitely. there is there was a difference when I always seen the dead people and then began to make a conscious awareness that actually I'm not crazy. This is actually <laughs> a living entities over there, you know, yeah. and then and then with this unfoldment become another unfoldment, which is a beginning. Yeah. So as a medium, as a developing medium, I find myself that there are parts of me that always in the novice stages. Correct. And that is the challenge of, I've been doing it for a while, but I am in a novice stage here. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's a very important understanding that even though a medium can be 30 years working as a medium, but within their development, there is always going to be a new unfoldment. Yes. And I think that's important not to discount that. Oh yes, definitely. And, uh, and please, uh, if that's what it sounds like, we're definitely not discounting, but we must start somewhere. And when it comes to science and study, it's most uh, advantageous to begin at uh, the level of where we see the most change. You yourself, I believe, uh, you know, you help guide others. And we all get to see where we have that student who goes from, I'm not sure I can do this, to, wow, look what I can do. And that part is vital to put a very strong foundation for all the remaining studies that will, hopefully, we can encounter more studies to go forward. You, like June, please do not go far away stay close, uh, stay interested, Ricky, because um, for many of us, this is, this is the start of something, in my opinion, and the best word I can find is amazing. Uh, and I, I hope we continue more studies and maybe other researchers will continue to, to, to understand based on these beginnings. So we definitely are not discounting. Well, um, I'm glad you say this so others can hear it and we repeat it because it's important. 
all of us are important to the progression, the understanding, the demonstration of the multiple phases of unfoldment, the multiple phases of beginning, uh, and as you've said and wonderfully said. So please don't go far away, Ricky. Even if you feel that you um, at this level may not meet the beginning criteria for this specific research, do not go away because we may need you for another type. Um, and uh, as Phil had mentioned, you are welcome to fill out that survey. And if in that survey, the information shows, you know, what you uh, have stated and the level where you are, you definitely can be someone that could be put on to contact next when another phase occurs. Uh, but thank you for sharing that because that's very important. May I make yeah. another question, please? Sure. Is that okay? Sure. Um, as you're saying that, Phil, um, you would be measuring the process and the skill, but how, because this is about consciousness and connecting to other ether, the, 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 the people in the ether. So how would that be measured? even for the new person? Yeah, I, I, I really want to, that's a really good question because it allows me to, to, to say that I really want to emphasize there is no measuring. This is what's called exploratory qualitative research. I'm just wanting people to tell me how they experience things and how they feel about them. Um, so it doesn't matter if they don't make if they don't sort of make what um, would be seen as big steps in the, in the development of their mediumship. It simply matters to me um, what sort of, and when I say experiences, I don't necessarily mean mediumship experiences. They have the experience of going regularly to the circle and all the, you know, the experience they maintain from that is just becoming familiar with the, the process or the activity or just with the other people in the circle. And that to me is just as important. So it isn't, I'm not looking to measure anything at all. I'm just wanting to hear about, you know, what, what they experience. And, yeah, I yeah. hope that, that, um, that, um, that uh, answers, answers your yes, question. Thank you. thank you very much, yes. Ricky, okay. I also feel that uh, I hope you start doing some research, Ricky. You got some great ideas over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's move along. Uh, Rachel, thank you, Ricky, by the way. Uh, Rachel, you can come in here, please. Um, okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, hi, I'm so excited that you're doing this um, type of research because I... Um, and whether or not I move forward past the survey phase, I think this is absolutely spectacular. And the reason I say this is because I'm brand new and it's a lot. And it's a lot that to try to figure out, you know, is that like you were saying, you know, wait, is that real? I was not um, born with the ability to see things and then, you know, or, you know, even like the Hollywood versions of what um, they kind of portray mediumship to be. So I feel like I'm kind of sifting through those waters as to what's really um, uh, tangible and versus, you know, what is, is not true for, for me anyways. And um, this has been like something that's been in the making for me personally in the last year, but the mediumship portion has only um, started piquing my curiosity and dipping my toes into the water for the last like month and a half, two months. And, um, and learning the terminology is still where I am. You know, they'll say things like sitting in the power and I'm like, oh, okay, I understand that concept, but then I'll like look into something else that's um, uh, something similar. And I'm like, is that sitting in the power? And they're like, no. And I'm so I'm still trying to figure it out. And, but the one thing that I can truly say is it is amazing. And the possibilities and the connections that I'm already starting to feel um, are life-changing. And it is, um, 
easy to see how this can make you want to continue building and continue um, learning and developing your skills as a lifetime, a lifelong um, dedication and devotion of your life. But uh, at any rate, I, again, I'm just very thankful that someone is starting this and, um, and recognizing that not everybody who's like maybe into developing um, their mediumship skills even knows whether or not they have them and how, uh, what it is that they're experiencing and then how that develops and unfolds from there. So um, I am very interested in following this research all the way to the end to see, um, like I said, even if I'm not a part of it, to see what type of developments come to be. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, Phil, I think we just found your cheerleader. You. Yes. yes. Yeah. You know, when, when you have those days, you feel you can't keep going, Phil, we found you, your cheerleader there. Oh, thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you. That's uh, great. Beth, can you come on in, please? Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hello. Great. Um, Phil, I'm really pleased that you're doing this, and I'm really pleased that you've been brought into the SNUI circle to do this because I um, haven't seen this happen before, and that's why I'm here, really, I'm interested. Um, without boring you about me. Um, I'm a medical doctor and um, I've never met another medical doctor in spiritual circles. And some of the things that you were saying earlier really resonate with me in particular um, about distinguishing between psychic or spiritual experiences and mental health, because there can be a lot of crossover with delusional ideation in particular. Um, and hallucinations um, of different types, auditory or visual hallucinations, for example. And that's something that's a bit of a challenge for me in my job, actually. Um, I'm relatively new to spiritualism. Um, I've got a little bit of family background, um, but I've literally only come into this sort of environment for, in the last three or four years. Um, and I have some psychic ability but I've never pursued um, mediumistic sort of circles or anything like that um, and another thing that you said that resonated with me which I think is very uh, much in the way of a science um, background people with scientific background or someone with further education is that you know you, you kind of think you, you get a syllabus and you have to tick off certain things. And by the end of the course, you've covered all the syllabus and you can say, yes, and here's my certificate. I can do this and I'm qualified. But um, having done a little bit of psychic development myself, um, it, it just couldn't be more different. Um, you're not in control of the timing or how you develop. Um, in, in, and um, it's just a completely different way of learning. Um, so all of that sort of thing fascinates me. Um, and when I started my psychic journey, it was only because somebody told me I was psychic that I started thinking about it and he had suggested I wrote, I write a journal. So I have about 12 volumes of journal um, about my psychic development. So it was about things I was noticing and it included a little bit of spirit as well as the psychic side. Um, so, I'm, I'd be very happy to help in any way I can, Phil, um, if, if you need anything in this uh, study, in the course of the study. Thank you, Beth. That's, that's really helpful and that would be great. And it's, it's interesting to hear from somebody who has that medical background. And has, um, there's not an awful lot of crossover between people in the science world and people in the um, spiritualist world. So it's it's really interesting to hear from somebody who has a, that foot in each world. So yeah. thank you. Um, yeah, thank you, Beth. And what I would say, just the last thing before I disappear, is um, there are actually a lot of people in the healthcare profession who have ability in this way, but don't necessarily know it. And I've noticed right. that a lot since um, since I sort of came into this, I can identify people now who have healing ability, et cetera, et cetera, and psychic ability. And I've had discussions with colleagues about they're not in the spiritualist circle, but they do 
they do acknowledge that there's some ability there, which mm. is just fascinating to me. I could talk yes. for hours, so I'll, I'll, I won't, I'll stop now. I think, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. I think that is a really interesting point, and I think there's a lot of potential for research there. Yeah, I definitely agree. Thank you for that. I'm so happy you're noticing because now you get to become, if you will, someone that they can feel safe to speak with. Again, we're changing the world. You know, uh, each time we make contact with humans and have these conversations. So thank you for that. Uh, Henriette, do we have, uh, you can come in, please. Yes, um, both of you, um, in my personal development, started a long time ago, but it went very gradual. And actually, before I could get to any kind of mediumship, I had to get to the core of myself. I had to sort out my own shit, so to say. Before I could do anything, mediumistic, work made connection with spirit. So it, for me, it started absolutely with personal development. And then I discovered I had potential for being a healing medium and I'm uh, close to my uh, accreditation so that's great yeah I agree thank you for that yes thank you um I, I think it's I think the aspect of personal development um is is something that is important to consider um it possibly isn't something that I'm considering explicitly at the moment but it'd be really interesting to see how much of that comes out in the interviews. So thank you. That's a really useful point. Yes, that's great. Uh, and I'm excited for your accreditation coming up, Henry. I think it's great. Yeah. Congratulations. Yes. Uh, let's have Manny step in, please. Hello, and thank you for doing the research. Um, it brought me here. Um, uh, so basically, to kind of break it up, you're pretty much going to be following someone, basically like a companion, as they go along their journey um, in the development. Is that correct? Okay. Pretty much. Um, you're not wanting to I'm, ask or see or try to test. It's just, just going along and seeing mentally, physically, kind of how it just develops. I, I would love to be able to do that, but it's a little bit more um, separated than that in that I can only do three interviews so one to start with and then one after sort of four to five months and then another after another four to five months so i'm um hoping that people will be able to tell me what they're doing it would be brilliant to be able to go alongside them um but i i don't have sort of the time. like a checkup it's like a checkup kind of in that way yes. where you're just yeah. checking up not it's not you're not trying to find out if somebody attune how they attune how they know and, and what it's just to see how the development is and to go along. So that's amazing because um, I, I too work in the medical field, um, but uh, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot and it's great to have somebody finally because a uh, very long time and I just started this uh, spiritual journey and it's been amazing and just, it's been changed, life changing for myself. Um, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to thank you. Yeah. Awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you for that. Another uh, uh, bringing science and spiritualism together. It's great. Yeah, um, it's, it's really nice. So thank you and, and good luck. <laughs> yeah, Manny, uh, if you need a, uh, a companion to follow you along, um, I'm sure there are many here that would love to see the, the journey you go through. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Let's bring uh, Jenny forward, please. Hi, Kelly, you okay? Hi, yep, it's <laughs> nice to see you. Um, my my questions are: um, Do you are you interested in what, what I have is the class? I guess can be classed as a spiritual awakening. So I went from <laughs> pretty much nothing to being hit by a truck. Is what it kind of feels like for me. So mine started at Christmas, um, and I'm now in month four. So it's been pretty crazy. And then my second question is: Do you also include um, physical mediumship because that's what I have? Gosh, um, the answer to that is, is I don't know in that I wouldn't necessarily kind of exclude those at, at all. Um, I suppose the, the, the important thing for me is that somebody is attending um, some sort of a spiritualist circle on a regular basis. So um, in terms of, a, you know, the 
uh, what you say about a spiritual awakening, that I would see as what, if you are attending to circle, that I would see as something that brought you to the circle and is informing your development. Um, I, I, I find my journey very difficult. I find it very isolating. I find it very traumatic at times. The, the things that I've experienced, like Daniel, I ended up I, like Beth. I, I, a lot of what Beth said when he's very truthfully, I work in a healthcare environment, um, and I and I work in a very old building, which didn't help me when I first started. <laughs> Um, which I had a very terrifying experience where a very senior surgeon ended up um, committing me to um, the local mental hospital. <laughs> um, but having said that, that was a necessary thing to do because, and, and I, I actually found out that through that process, um, that the, the amazing um, mental health professionals were very understanding and, and almost were giving me the nod to say, we know what you're going through, but we can't. We can't tell you what it is. We know what it is, but we can't. We're not allowed officially to tell you what you're going through. So we, we we're saying yes. What you are experiencing is absolutely valid, but we can't we can't diagnose you. We can't put a finger on it. We can't tell you what it is. And that was an extremely terrifying experience for me. My my personal experience has been I I my first um mediumistic sense is I get touched, so I get touched a lot. Um. That's my first and foremost. Um, that that's how it's been. <laughs> um, I, and 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 I my 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 journey has been from zero to absolute craziness, which is where it's at now. But I felt that this I I struggled with the loneliness of it and feeling very isolated. I, I like and I my husband that I feel like I'm part of Doctor Xavier's. Um. No, I've lost you a bit there. Yeah, we're losing you there, Jenny, yeah. um, with reception. But I will just say, I think we lost you all together. Um, I will just say that um, uh, I understand a lot of what you're speaking about. I can relate to that as part of my journey. And I would just simply encourage you to do fill out that survey, please, um, so that we, we can see what, what comes of it. Uh, because, uh, again, and, and if that hasn't been clear to everyone, we, we are... We, I'm talking like I'm part of your research, Bill. Uh, Bill is uh, is speaking about uh, looking and seeking those who are of the spiritualist uh, circles, involved in spiritualist um, circles in, as part of their development. Um, again, it may sound, some of you who aren't familiar with research, very rigid or very um, exclusionary. It's not that it's exclusionary. It's we have to start somewhere. And this is where we get to begin. And from here, things can then progress and branch on out to new avenues that may never have been considered. So I hope you can hear that. Research is a very interesting place to be in, correct, Phil? Absolutely, yes. And you, uh, you don't always have control over what exactly you can do. Um, and I have had a lot of um, discussions with my supervisors in which they keep saying, keep it simple <laughs> or you won't be able to finish it. So right. that's partly the reason for the restrictions and the focus. Um, I do need to actually be able to finish the research. And as Daniel said, I really hope that this will then lead on to other things where it's less, less restricted and yes. more exploration can be done. And we need you to, to, to be done with this research. So that way we have also a starting point for ourselves. This is an important step for those of us involved in spiritualist circles and, and, and for what we do. So, um, you know, if, if you, again, in research, it's great to have a cheerleader. It's great to have motivation and just know there are a bunch of mediums as ourselves, spiritualists as ourselves who are thinking about the great work you're doing because we need you to be doing your work, Phil. And uh, we're very appreciative of you doing this research project. It means a lot. It really oh. does. Thank you. I, I really appreciate the help that you've given me. It's invaluable. Um, it is so nice to be able to, to, to reach out and talk to people. Um, so thank you for facilitating that. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, before uh, we start kind of like the end process, do we have any more questions? Uh, yes, we do have. Let's have Alexandra come forward, please. Um, hello there. Uh, my question is to the sample size because i feel 
uh, because of the very wide range of experience uh, li within the development of mediumship, let alone within each country or part of the country or part of the world that you come from, where you're developing, each one of those skews the, the answers of you know, what you will conclude if you have a sampling from Australia in the outback and a sampling from Sydney will be different from New York or from California or from England, Northern England versus Southern England versus, you know, it's endless in the variety. So if you have a small selection of people, I don't know that it really will be that, um, I mean, it'll be an interesting research project, but I don't know that it will be truthful in the sense of what development is really like in mediumship. So I'm asking, what is the size of your yes. sample? Okay, uh, I th thank you. And I think that's, um, those points are really valid and they're important to think about. And um, I, so that's the reason for doing the survey and the interviews. The survey, I, um, there is no maximum sample size. And so I am putting it out through, putting out the link through the SNU in the UK, the SNUI, um, and also to American spiritualist churches, can, you know, most of the English speaking world. Um, so Canada, Australia, New Zealand, where, including one in Sweden, um, to try to get as, as uh, wide a spread as possible. And um, that hopefully would enable me to uh, potentially identify maybe differences among um, differences in approach. I would hope that the spiritualist approach will be largely similar there um, because I'm not, uh, I will be separating out responses from people who are not spiritualist mediums, if you see what I mean, focusing on people who are spiritualist mediums. So um, in terms of being able to generalize, I will not be able to generalize in terms of saying, you know, sort of 75% of spiritualist mediums, you know, have this experience or whatever, because my sample is not representative. But I will hope to be able to say within my sample, which is reasonably large of the survey, um, we have a large proportion of people within the sample reporting this sort of experience or these sorts of beliefs or these sorts of changes. The interviews are a much more, as much smaller sample, and it is absolutely the case that I would not be looking to generalize. That is, it's, this is the exploratory nature. What we don't know is whether there are, uh, whether common themes may emerge. So I'm uh, intending to interview, um, I'm hoping, aiming to start out with between 16 and 20 interviewees. Hopefully that will go the distance, but always there are some people who may have to drop out for whatever reason. And for these interviewees, I'm, I will be doing what's called a thematic analysis. So I look at to see if there are common themes across the different um, experiences, but I also look to see about the range of variety. And because this is, is it the, at, at the exploratory stage, what I would hope from that is just to be able to report on that in quite a descriptive way. Um, these are the variety of experiences. These are common themes. And what, you know, what would we be able to learn about mediumship development if we then did research that focused on these and that asked these specific questions of a wider range of people? wider group of people do you does that make sense to you it makes sense uh, i'm just I, i'm actually surprised that it's such a small 20 is like nothing to me for in comparison for even my experience in attending different classes which in each class i have 20 people and each class is such a different flavor such a different um even approach sometimes some uh, such a different experience in each one 
which is why I go to very different types of classes because each one comes at it from a different angle, which then that allows me to um, sort of based in the various flavors. Uh, yes, <laughs> and, the, yeah. the, 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 but the, I understand the, what you're saying. And if you're presenting it just as a, a descriptive kind of thing, not percentages, not correct. Uh, summaries, uh, then sure, it's a starting point. Correct. And also, just as a reminder, it's not, we are not attempting to convince spiritualism that science can help us. We're attempting to convince science that spiritualism can help them. Um, and that's why, you know, we are starting somewhere to begin with the thematics in order to have better understanding of where to go next and the exploration. Um, but it's a great question because it helps us to explain more to everyone else who's here attending and who watches this recording um, why it is the way that it is and how we're not looking to generalize and how, you know, again, where this is a cornerstone, this is a pillar um, of, that may hopefully lead to much, much more. Well, great, thank you, Alexandra. Thank you, thank you. Uh, oops, I just asked you to unmute again, Alexandra. Sorry for that. <laughs> uh, let's uh, bring, we have another question from Manny. Just a quick question, um, it's generalized. Um, so you said you, you are looking for people that are starting out. Um, for those who are actually are starting out, um, who are looking for a, uh, I think you had said, you're only looking for um, people who attend a, uh, a spiritual, like a, a spiritual circle um, regularly. For those who are finding their journey way and finding their circle, we'll say, um, how do are you, how do you navigate that? Um, or are you looking for somebody that's going every once a week, twice a week? Because um, you did say you're looking for somebody who's going, who's attending the circle. Yeah, thank you, um, Manny. I think the the idea is is it doesn't have to. I mean, uh, um, the SNUI circle that I attend is is once a fortnight, but it is um, it is that sort of regular attendance at a spiritualist circle um not necessarily the same exactly the same one um but i think it's important that it is uh, a regular uh, process if you like because um i'm needing people to be able to talk to me about their experiences between one interview and the next and if during that time they haven't really been working on their mediumship in any way at all then um there's not very much uh, for me to, to ask them about. Does that make sense? Great, good. Um, and we are approaching the end of time here. So just want to, right. we do have one question left here and then we'll need to um, close up shortly, but let's have Henriette return, please. Yes, I just remembered, I used to work as a volunteer in a mental hospital, a psychiatric hospital. And I remember one at one point, a person coming to me, she had regressive therapy, that she wanted to be near me because I had known a person, I met this person twice. I mean, then I felt very uncomfortable. Then I think, do they know what they're asking this person to do? To get close to people who knew this person. And I think there's even in that field, there's a lot of misunderstanding right. about spiritualism. Right, there is, there is. And, and again, yes. hopefully this helps us to start understanding behavior more and we start understanding processes of change more. Um, but yeah, it's very, very understandable. Thank you, Henry. Yeah. And yeah. I also see people there in that hospital that I don't think they belong there. They're just mediumistic. Right. Yeah, I agree. Again, part of my story, I can relate to that. Yeah, thank you for reminding us of that. I appreciate that. Um, Phil, is there anything that you wanted to make sure that you covered before we end? Uh, um, just to, to say that I should, um, at some point I should communicate to people the um, specifics of the survey. Uh, so things, just very briefly, um, it is anonymous. If you choose to leave your contact details about the interview, your contact details will be stored separately. 
So nobody can uh, associate your contact details with your answers. Um, the answers will all be stored, all the data is stored in university online facilities, password protected, accessible only by me and my supervisors. Um, uh, it will be anything that is published will be carefully anonymized beforehand so that no individual can be identified. Um, there is more, there is the first page of the survey gives you all this information and then asks you to, if you consent to having your data stored and used in that way. Um, so at that point, if you're not happy with anything, you can exit the survey and you're welcome to email me for clarification or more information at any point. So possibly, Daniel, if there is a way of communicating the, the link to people, um, I, I can put it in the chat or, um, or you could email it with the information to people afterwards. Um, yes, for those of you who are interested, whether you're watching this recording or you've been here this evening, just please send me an email and I'll make the connection happen. Uh, this way we can have one point of contact. So it's easy, you can find my email either, uh, you either already have it or you can find it in the newsletter or on the website um, and just send me a short email just um, regarding the research and then I will make the connection happen. So that way it's streamlined and easy for all. Yeah, thank you. That, that's really helpful. Um, and it, in a way, it's not, I don't know whether it's positive or negative, but nobody will actually know whether you've done the survey or not, um, unless it, uh, I contact you about the interviews. So it, it is not, um, you know, it, it really is private. Uh, that's the word. There's a longer word for that, and I can't remember it. It's, it's obviously getting towards the end of my hour. It is. It is. Uh, again, Phil. Confidential. Again. That's the word. <laughs> I was going to say anonymous, but I'm glad you came up with the word confidential. Um, again, Phil, thank you so much for your time this evening and bringing forward uh, this opportunity. And those of you who participated, and thank you for your questions you have asked because it has helped us to explain and clarify and also to gather much more information. What you have imparted this evening, day, morning, uh, has helped fill. Um, expand awareness and consciousness around the different themes and needs from spiritualism, from mediumship, from your own desires of what you wish to see out there. So again, thank you for participating and being here with us this um, this, this day, uh, this evening as we move along. So please, again, reach out to me if you'd like to be considered uh, for this, uh, as well as participating by giving us uh, more information from taking the survey itself, please let me know and I'll make the connection happen. Thank you all for being here this evening. I uh, wish you well, see you soon. And for those of you who are already starting your weekend, please enjoy it. And hopefully we'll see all each other again soon. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, a big thank you to everybody. Yeah, thank you very much.